Well, here's a, a question that came in that I think is very interesting. John chapter 10. I definitely, I think I've dealt with this in a separate study, but I wanted to have a shorter Q&A video on this. So let's look at this real quick. John chapter 10. There are a lot of preachers that are obsessed with trying to find the body of Christ before Paul. And they'll go, they have these proof texts to, to try to prove that the body of Christ was revealed before Paul's ministry. They don't believe the Bible. Because if you believe the Bible, it was revealed through Paul. <laughs> it's that simple, is it not? But no, they, they think it's some grave heresy. And they've got to find the body of Christ before Paul. And here's one of the main places they'll go. John 10, verse 16. The Lord Jesus said, And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. They say, see there? That's the body of Christ. Do you think there's a difference between a fold and a body? I think so. <laughs> okay, now, the way most Bible teachers interpret John 10, 16 is a classic example of a danger I often warn about, and that's called anticipating revelation. In other words, taking truth that Christ revealed from heaven through the Apostle Paul and reading it back into a time before it was revealed. And they want to they find this age in the earthly ministry of Christ. Listen, it's not there. He didn't reveal it then. When did He reveal it? From heaven. Okay? Now, uh, the Bible is a complete revelation. So we have a tendency, we have the whole book, to read something that was revealed at one point and read it into a place before it was even revealed. Be careful not to do that. It will hinder you in your Bible study. If the plain words of Ephesians 3 have any meaning, and of course they do because God always says what He means and means what He says, Christ cannot be referring to the body of Christ in John 10. Because Paul said it was made known unto him by revelation. I mean, Colossians 1, Ephesians 3, he said it was by revelation that the, this mystery of the body of Christ was made known to him. Okay? And so, I'm not going to even go over there and look at those passages because you ought to be familiar with them. Ephesians 3 and Colossians 1 are great places to go to to see this. Now, again, one fold with one shepherd is not the same thing as one body with one head. Now, Christ did not say that the one fold was a mystery, because it's not. It's prophecy, okay? Christ came in His earthly ministry to confirm the promises made to the Jewish fathers. Everything He said was found in prophecy. Okay? It was, he wasn't revealing. The, the only mysteries He revealed to His disciples concerned what was prophesied about the kingdom of heaven. The mystery of the body of Christ is not given till later. So, look in Ezekiel 34. According to prophecy, the scattered sheep of Israel are going to be regathered and united as one in the kingdom. There's two options here on who are these other sheep. First of all, it could be referring to those scattered Jews out among the Gentiles. They must be brought in. Ezekiel 34 now, I'm not going to read all this passage for time's sake, but you can really the whole second half of this chapter you need to look at. But let's jump in at verse number um, 22. Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle, and I'll set up one shepherd over them. And he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them and shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them, I, the Lord, have spoken it. And I'll make with them a covenant of peace and so on. Uh, so David will be resurrected to reign as a, as a king in the kingdom of heaven. Now Christ is the king of kings. But David's going to be there. There are going to be the twelve apostles sitting on twelve thrones. There's a vast system of government that's going to be set up. Look in Ezekiel 37. But notice the language, one shepherd, and he's talking about his flock. Ezekiel 37. Uh, 
Yeah, in verse beginning in verse 15, he he has this illustration of taking one stick and riding upon it for Judah and for Israel that he's going to take two sticks and join him as one to show how it's no, no more going to be a divided kingdom between the northern tribes and the southern tribes, but it's going to be united, one, one nation, one fold, so to speak, under one shepherd. Um, verse 21, I say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'll take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and will gather them on every side, bring them in their own land. I'll make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they divide into two kingdoms anymore at all. Is that not clear? So you can go into prophecy and see that the kingdom had been divided in Israel but in the kingdom age, when the Lord is the king, they're going to be one nation with one shepherd, right? Okay, so I think that's, you, can, you could say that's the other sheep, the scattered. Look, on the day of Pentecost, there were Jews that came to Jerusalem from every nation uh, under heaven. Uh, in Acts 2, you, you see all these different nations. That's not talking about Gentiles. That's talking about Jews that came out of these. Uh, they had been scattered to those nations and they were coming to Jerusalem for the feast day. So they must be brought in. Now, if he's talking about Gentiles, that would be Matthew 25, and you don't have to turn there. You're familiar with the judgment of the nations. At the second coming of Christ, the Lord's going to divide the sheep from the goats. The sheep on his right hand enter the kingdom. Okay, and by the way, the goats are always on the left. And they head for everlasting damnation. Anyway, so... He, he, he says he's going to bring the sheep. And those sheep, he's talking about Matthew 25, are Gentile nations. But they're still Gentiles and they're going to be underneath Israel. Israel will be a kingdom of priests over the nations. So either way, he's either talking about Scattered Jews that are going to be called out of the nations and assembled in their land, one one fold under one shepherd, or he's going to, or he, and it's also true he's going to gather uh, Gentile nations into his kingdom that are going to worship the king. But he's not revealing one body in which there's neither Jew nor Gentile. That's not in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And people break their neck trying to find it, and I don't understand why. Why can't they just accept the words on the page that Paul said it was made known to him? I, I, it just blows my mind how people are about that. And I've dealt with it for years. You know, I've, I've, I've heard all this stuff, these supposed proof texts. They're not... They are taking it out of context and making it say something it doesn't say. I didn't say you couldn't get a blessing. I love John chapter 10. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. I give my life for the sheep. Well, hey, you can get a great blessing out of that. But what's he talking about doctrinally in the context? He said, I'm not sent but to lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? All right. So remember that when somebody They'll throw it on you. If you ever try to talk to people about this, they'll, oh, Jesus said other sheep, one fold. There it is. No, it ain't. <laughs> Not there. Okay. All right. One other one. Unless anybody has anything to add to that. Anything to add? A lot of time they'll go to John because of the emphasis on the world. But I remind you, the kingdom is going to be a worldwide kingdom. You know, it's in the book of John. It said salvation is of the Jews. It's on the book of John that Jesus said, if you do good, you'll be resurrected to life. It's in the book of John, He said, if you don't abide in Me, you're going to be cut off and cast forth and burned. It's not the same thing. There's applications all through the Bible. But you've got to stay in dispensational context. <laughs>